Starbeams Audio. Thank you for listening to the Starburns Audio Podcast Network. We have so many great comedy shows to add to your playlist. Just last week on Starburns Audio, on the season two premiere of Humans Who Make Games, Adam Conover talks to comedian Ron Funches and Jean Goudon, creative director of the Assassin's Creed series. On Boogie Monster, Cal Kinane and Dave Stone share a perfect recipe for the quarantined cook. This week on Profiles and Eccentricity, they cover the history of the Khorasan Unity Cult, folks for whom a flat earth is ridiculous because they believe it's really a concave shell. Search Starburns Audio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast platform for our full list of shows featuring hosts like Joe Coy, Amanda Seals, Jessica Chobot, and Jackie Johnson. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Starburns Audio. Enjoy the show. Stay safe. Stay healthy and keep laughing. It's a good show. Dan and Rand and Jay will share tales of folks so unaware they lack in grace and sometimes choose the life they choose will make the news. Breaking down each epic fail in Florida, there's half price bail. I'm happy to say they could. So listen to our podcast jam with co-host Arm and Dan. Remember, don't be a jerk, cause when the music gets the funny hits, we are gonna take you down. Stick around, make a sound, hunger down, it's Dumb People Town. Hey, Townies, welcome to another episode of Dumb People Town. Population you. Population Meltzer. Oh, baby. This is a great episode This for has us. been one that's on the calendar that I have been looking forward to, not just because I'm a fan of his, not just because I've read every single one of his books and have his books for my kids, but because he is an old friend of ours from college, Brad Meltzer. Welcome, Welcome to the show, Brad. Can I tell you that yeah. the best part of doing the show is, of course, seeing you, but it's that... The publicist for my book publisher mm-hmm. put on the schedule that this is called Dumb People in Town. <laughs> <laughs> and that is single handedly. <laughs> Why you came? Dan, I was just like, it's also love true. It. It's so true. <laughs> dumb People in, in Town. town. <laughs> it could also be a name for the show. <laughs> it's <laughs> also like a Sesame Street bit, right? It just somehow sounds there a are little dumb happy. Dumb People in Town. Dumb yeah. People in Town. Guys. People in your neighborhood <laughs> that are dumb. Who are the dumb what people? What was in the town? statement I should think before what I do? I uh, should think yeah, before what I do. It was an old one. It was an old one. statement. Well, Dan Van Kirk's with us. I'm so happy you're here. I just love, Brad, you you just get it. You, you're you're on the tour for your new book, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But The Escape Artist. You are, you're, you're in it as much as we were when we were promoting the Poop documentary, which people can still get on iTunes and Amazon. But we were out in the mix doing that, and you're like, you get into this pattern of like, all right, I know my sound bites. I know what I'm going to say. And I know, but then you come, and again, I mean, our friendship goes so deep and and lasts for over 20 25 years almost oh, at this gosh. point more, yeah, more 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 than 25 years uh, uh no it's it's i'm going to tell you it's 28 years 28 years gosh which is, i mean that's you know and again when we were college kids this is the one listen i'm i'm i have three more cities right i have this mm-hmm. one and two more this is the entire interview I'm waiting the entire time for because it's when you come in, when you do stuff with your friends, yeah. you become your real self, right? It's not your bit, it's not your thing. I was right. like, I don't even care if we talk book or not. We're gonna have fun at dumb people in town. <laughs> like it's gonna be the greatest <laughs> thing. And I just couldn't even correct her because she was like, like, like she would like say it to me. It's like when your kid mispronounces something, you're like, I can't, I just I gotta Or like when your when your grandmother is talking about your book that you're writing. Right, no matter what. But escaping even escaping artists. Right, the escaping, escaping artists with the artists. <laughs> But the thing is, is even if she says says it to me, I will refer back to her. I'm like, I cannot wait. You are right. I can't wait to go on dumb people in town. Yes. like I just start selling. <laughs> well, it now too. Sell that's what I'm going to start telling you. So that the, mark your calendars. This is the moment at which we started calling this dumb people in town, uh, guys. We have a a live show to mention that we are going to be that has just been added. We mentioned it kind of on, uh, I believe we did on the Facebook page, uh, but we're doing a live dumb people town and two stand up shows with Daniel Van Kirk yep. in Chicago on Friday, May fourth. 
at North Bar. If you go to Live at North Bar, you can check it out and get it all the It is tickets. a small venue. It will sell out. Yeah. All I know it's is like we 100 did... seats right there at the corner of Ashland and North. And all I know is we tweeted about it and Facebooked about it. And, and it's, the, already, it's like... already sold like 50 tickets. Okay. So it's going to go. And Dan says- You hear got... that, Mom? Dan's got 40 people that are coming off the bat. I think we <laughs> I have, have like 50 people. too much support to ever much... be successful. Dan, you have way too much support. You, are... <laughs> but you also have the ability, now you can give guilt- there's nothing yeah. better than if you almost don't sell it and then you can give guilt for why weren't you there. Yeah. Why weren't you there? I, it's not going to happen. Here's though. what I want. I want it, those shows, all three of them, to sell out before we even land. Well, the great thing is is how we set it up, guys. So it's going to be a stand-up show, dumb people talent stand-up show. And they're so selling. Come, you can buy both. You yes. can buy stand-up Package show plus a pod. Package it any way you want. Go grab some drinks, come to dumb people in town, and then go see <laughs> us do stand-up or flip it the other way. Have stand-up, us, and then go get drunk somewhere else. Yeah. And then go be a dumb person in town. Mm-hmm. Right. Responsibly. Before we get into any of the stories today, uh, we have to mention that, Brad, you are waiting for a phone call right now as we record this to find out if your book, uh, The Escape Artist, is going to be on the New York, New York Times, Times bestseller. bestseller. Yeah, I don't this know how is that... the pressure. The pressure is on. The, no one will say it, but like you wait all day. It comes at 5 o'clock East Coast time. <laughs> And at five o'clock, you'll find out if you're on the list or if right, you're or even near the top. Right, you find out how many books your relatives bought is what you find out. <laughs> All right, That's so really what happens. as we record this, if episode, he gets a call during the show, we'll let you know as soon as we know. All right, listen, we've got stories, and I know we dance. know the world is getting dumber, or dumb is beating smart in a race, or dumb it looks. Stephen dumb Haw- is stronger. Stephen Hawking died, and Donald Trump is still alive. Dumb is fucking winning. All right, I just feel like there's more people who are like, oh, you're dumb. That's cool. Like, yeah, they're okay with it. Todd, like, yeah. you Todd get Glass texted me. While high and said, you're going to come on my podcast well, and talk we'll about- We'll definitely talk, talk about how the world's We getting... have a story today. It's not to the third one where it's like one of the dumbest things. Todd, okay. tweeted, Todd tweeted at me. Texted you. Texted me. He said, you want to come and talk about how the world's getting uh, dumber? He's like, the world's getting dumber is what dumb people say. The world's getting smarter. And then he didn't put an apostrophe between world and the S. Mm-hmm. And I said, it's worlds, world apostrophe S, not worlds, W-O-R-L-D-S. See, the world is getting dumber. And then, and then he, he didn't respond. Well, he said I'm high. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Daniel, let's jump into a story okay, right away. We, we have Brad Meltzer here. We have New York Times bestselling author Brad Meltzer here. Right. And how did you guys all meet? College. College. Where? At uh, University of Michigan. Michigan. That's where this story takes place. Oh! oh well done. Preparation. Daniel. Sent in by Kimberly Disco at Cineru, C-I-N-N-A-R-U-E, Kimberly Disco. Kimberly Disco is not dead. Kimberly Mm-mm. Disco is totally the fakest name I've ever heard. <laughs> That's right. That is your, that is your, I'm a cop in 1970, and I, I'm, right. that's my street name. Right. Yeah. Or like Kimberly Disco was definitely helped by Magnum P.I. Like I was going to say, she three. definitely is the one who comes in and hires the private eye. Yeah, yes. Always. Uh, yes. Always. 100%. I'm in danger, and I need your help. <laughs> Kimberly Disco still calls weed grass. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's a I mean? good one. She also still calls the police the fuzz. <laughs> P.I.G. Pigs. <laughs> one? One traumatized family would probably question Burger King's definition of family friendly after they allegedly saw a few minutes of softcore porn (laughs) on a Michigan Burger King location's in-store TV. Okay. Okay. Randy and I were, you know, unintentional spokespeople for Burger King briefly. Uh, <laughs> we had nothing to do with this. Let me start by saying we had nothing to do with places. I actually think it'd be cooler you. if you had everything. I, to I do was going to say it. that would be respect if you caused it. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Softcore porn. What are we talking about here? I Red, Red, like, Red Shoe well, Diaries. Well, right, is it Cinemax? Fifty Shades Darker. What's Where girl, are we? What guy wanted to own a bar, but? Their rich dad gave them a Burger, Burger King, King franchise So they still instead. were like, I'm putting a TV um, up in this Burger we're King. Watch. I don't remember a TV being at any Burger King. I, I love when they break the rules of the franchise and, and they just make their, their own, own restaurant. Yes. Like So it's half one restaurant and half homemade. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is the best. <laughs> there is. I've been in <laughs> fast food. Like, t- why on are the these road, Tiffany lamps on at the a road, Burger like, King? You'll be in like a random McDonald's <laughs> or a Taco Bell and by the register, they're selling some sort of like local pastry or like thing that's yes. like Barbecue barbecue sauce. Sauce. Right? Yeah. Then you know it's really the best one. And it's also better when it's when it's really something you can't get anywhere else. And it, or it could even be like coupons for your fixing your car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I like mm-hmm. when they bring it all together. It's like this yeah. cooperative. Do you yeah. guys remember McDonald's? We're in the neighborhood. Did, what did they have? Didn't they have McDonald's bucks? Yeah, McDonald's dollars. My Aunt Mildred, that's what she gave every Christmas. It was like five right. McDonald's. Right, they were dollars. they were like the holiday present. Yeah. Right? My Mc- grandma my Aunt Mildred was all about those. <laughs> they should have called them McBucks. <laughs> yeah. I think they were called McBucks. <laughs> 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 
But what Burger King is like? Let's put a TV up in here. We we yeah. A Who, Burger King though feels a little bit like it should have a TV. Like a McDonald's, you're like, oh, I don't know if that would go. But Burger King feels a little bit lower. But right. to me, you feel the, like a TV is right. But fast food, they make the 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 booths uncomfortable. They want you to yeah, get out of there out. so they can turn it over real quickly. Why would they then put like to me? That's counterintuitive to put it. Like TV you, up. you've never heard this phrase at a Burger King. Someone walks up to the front and says, "What's the Wi-Fi in here?" Right. <laughs> never. No <laughs> never. one's never. ever asked that no, question, and, at any and no Burger one's King. ever like, "Hey, let's go." And someone's like, hang on a second. There's 20 minutes left in the show I'm watching. <laughs> right. Right. I got to watch like my you, stories. I, I like that you like that it's a story as opposed to like, because I saw completely a sports. <laughs> but I like that you were like, no, they're in for the full 22 minutes. No, this is like, hour yep. with commercial. it's like yep. Kojak reruns and like the young Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> Rerun. Reruns. Reruns. Already. Richard Avery said that he and his stepsons, so he's already a great stepdad. This is, oh, you knew it was coming to stepdad. That is right, no I'll dad. Take you to dinner, but we're only going to Burger King and shut up. Yes, you can watch the TV. They stopped into the Southgate, Michigan Burger King at 15350 Eureka Road. Mm-hmm. Add that to the walking tour for Dumb People Town. Please do it. At about 2.30 p.m. on Sunday, February 18th, and they almost immediately noticed some questionable content on the television. Okay. Which means it was on when they walked in. So how many people in this Burger King <laughs> weren't talking about it? They were just letting letting it watching go. porn. By letting way, it go. It was silent in that Burger King. Like, because everyone, you know, like, no one's like, People looking around like, Shh. Are we going to call out honey, the Sisters honey, Sandwich? Honey, 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 shh. Don't ruin this like don't you ruin, ruin everything. Shh. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. I don't want to hear I'm almost done. When the, someone's by watching the way, the South picture Carolina. that I have in my head is actually not the empty Burger King, but a completely packed oh, Burger yes. King. Like so Sunday dinner. And all their Sunday eyes dinner. are up in the corner, right? Yeah. Everybody's Rat. up, and they're all to the knows. After church. And you know what I love about it? In my mind, it's not a flat screen TV like embedded into <laughs> no, something on the wall. It's, it's a, a full big, full Tube. backed TV on like one of those those hinges that makes it diagonally downward <laughs> like yeah. a hospital so it, yeah. hinge on and there's like arm. there's some magnetic distortion on parts <laughs> yeah. of the screen yeah. and <laughs> it has one of those remote controls that you can run sideways if you get between channels yep. you could find that porn yeah. that you're showing <laughs> squiggly porn you can find more that, squiggly porn that got me through a lot of old use <laughs> squiggly porn <laughs> My also like picture the stepdad. He's like, "Look, I want the kids to respect me. I'm going to take them out for dinner and <laughs> take them real nice." I'm my take oldest, them to my oldest son said, "Don't look up at the TV." First of all, he's not your son, right? Your but stepson. the kid <laughs> says it to him, "Don't look up no, at the, the TV. TV." I love that the kid is again, and this is Most classic stepdad, stepdad thing where the son has to be the parent and the dad. <laughs> yeah. I look up at quote, I look up at the TV, and this guy was fondling this woman's breast. <laughs> the man was thrusting on a woman. That's definitely not something you see at a Burger King any day. Really? Uh, look, I, think I, think they might, I live in actually, Miami. Technically, <laughs> it is something you've seen at a Burger King any uh, day. Now, if you had said every... Any day. <laughs> any day, you that's, that point's already been disproven. Let me just say this. That is how they make the special sauce. <laughs> uh, look. I just also can't say that I am i can't get over the kids saying, don't look up. <laughs> yeah. Because if it was me, I would say nothing. Yeah. I would oh, just be yeah. like, as long as I Brad, can get this you moment. as a kid, you would have just been like, please, nobody stop me. First of all, right. Stewie Meltzer... Took me to see Saturday Night Fever in the theater. There was a topless scene in there. I was seven yeah. years old. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just like, it's good for you. You're going to learn. Da- your dad had an earring long before Early dad. Earring. Long before dad's had earrings. Yes, it wasn't. And, and he had an earring. And my mother wanted him, supposedly, to grow a Steven Seagal ponytail to go <laughs> But with he the had, when I saw him at one point, he did have a ponytail. He had no. He had like the. He had like a, a mullet. little bit. Yeah, of it was a, a little mullet. It was yeah. a Miami yeah. mullet. It was. May he rest. The great thing about yeah, that yeah. is, I'm pretty certain they recut Saturday Night Fever for like a G-rated version that takes out like so much of the uh, movie. But that you movie can't holds tell up. It yeah, holds oh yeah, up. the original, it the really actual. Does. Theatrical Especially the does. boobies. What, when we they were, held up. They, they did. Up. And when, I, when we did Wild Hogs with Travolta, we asked him like so many questions about Saturday Night Fever. We at, like I remember asking him about the line when he's like, I spend a lot of time on my hair. Mm-hmm. And you hit it. my hair. And you hit it. And you hit my hair. And you hit it. Improv. Richard, Just want to let you know really? that was an improv. Oh, yeah. yes, wow, that, was, an that improv. was one of my favorite lines in the movie. Loved it. Because I lived in Brooklyn at the time, and he was obviously, it was Brooklyn. So for us, that was our life. And, Your and, dad was so Brooklyn. Your dad well, my, was like if Harvey Firestein was straight. Yeah, you know he I mean? was. But, was but like also my mother, at the height of Studio 54 in Brooklyn, 
the only people who could get into Studio 54 were my parents because Why? my mother went to junior high school and high school with Steve Rubell. Stop! Whoa. And so they used to go, so Terry and Stewie used to show up, the Melchers would show up, and it would be like this crazy, this is the height of the 70s Studio yeah. 54, and they'd be like, Terry Rubin's here, and they were like, part the ways, and I was like, why do we sleep out every night at Nanny and Poppy's? <laughs> like, because they are 54. at like five o'clock in the morning at Studio 54, and oh they weren't God. coming home till Sunday. God bless them. That's awesome. They lived They lived right. Uh, That's well, how you live. They lived hard, like a, they lived life like a, like, like like a, a softcore born at a burger. <laughs> so, yeah, they lived it right. Well, Stepdad Richard Avery said he was appalled because, quote, it seemed like a scripted pornographic film. That is the least yeah, cool what, what, way what to say What pornographic that. films are improvised? When is, like is Christopher Guest dipped a toe in the <laughs> pornographic form? I would watch that. Is, I there would watch a reali- that. is there a reality now? Because I love that he defined like the way the Emmys do, right? Scripted and unscripted. Yeah, yeah he's, he's saying it was an amateur. It was an amateur. <laughs> so he knows as a stepdad yeah, should. scripted pornographic He was material. also equally employed that the employees weren't in a hurry to change the channel immediately after he asked them. I didn't even get a direct response, Avery said. They were trying to figure out orders still. I couldn't believe it. So yeah, it probably is packed. Mm-hmm. And there and the people up there are like, we didn't turn the channel. We're trying to get these orders out. But yeah, he's over here guys. just appalled. Yeah, I'm sorry. Look, whatever's I got, I got two whoppers I got to go to deal it. with this right now. This guy's got, he's, she's, she's got a huge whopper she's dealing with on screen. I'm dealing with four whoppers here. That's, but, but you just to define, it's a plan now. It's oh, not yeah. an accident. Right. That's a plan. Yep. Yeah, that's what they wanted to do. I, this feels like something that would happen at a Wendy's. This I'm feels like the greatest Burger King of all time, the more <laughs> yeah, I think I about it. Avery said he turned the television off himself while staff at the restaurant tried to tried to apologize, which is, is a horrible joke. <laughs> so but I just wanted one person in the back to be like, yo, I'm having it my way over yeah. here. <laughs> How did it take us so long to get to that? I cursed at myself. Daniel Van, Van Kirk. Kirk. Richard said he was more concerned with protecting his children than recording the movie. Recording? Why would he record it? <laughs> also, it's just hold a on. Tit. Hold on. I need to protect my children. <laughs> no, you hold my camera. Uh, to me, there has to be footage of someone, co- you know, like right. shooting that and then posting. I would post that on Instagram in a second. Oh, well, yeah. he's also clearly thinking of the lawsuit, right? Yeah, in that yeah, moment, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, do yeah. I do the lawsuit or do I protect the children? The boy's mother, whose identity was kept anonymous by local news station WXYZ, Why? said that other customers were aware of the programming and that they were kind of into it. Yes! <laughs> Supporting my theory! <laughs> yes. Kind of into it and means I love totally, that totally into, into it. it. <laughs> You're shocked that people at a Burger King at 220 on a Sunday <laughs> are, are into, into porn. softcore well, porn. There was another couple in there, and the guy was watching it with his wife, and she yelled at him, You're a nasty horn dog. <laughs> She told the station. I love that this is like being recorded by a news outlet. Yeah. At what point did they write that down? By I'm the way, told by have s- you ever tried the nasty horn dog at Burger it's King? It's very it's good. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It is probably the best way to serve a Extra hot nasty. Dog. Yeah. Quote, I told my son to erase it from his memory and we will go to therapy and we'll discuss it further. Right. That's a direct quote. Erase that from quote. your memory. I'm gonna ra- you're going to erase this from your, mer- from your memory. We are going to go to therapy kids, and we'll right, talk guys? about it. Always. Yeah. Always. Erase Nothing that. Better. Erase that from your memory. Yeah, you seem like someone who can afford therapy. You're at Burger King. Okay, here's what I love, too. This happens a lot with local news. Somebody will want to be anonymous, but, like, their house is behind them, yeah, right. or their address has been <laughs> yeah, given. Exactly. Okay, so the, the stepdad, totally cool with you knowing who he is, yeah, right? That's not- We've already said his name, Avery, whatever. Yeah. The wa- his Stephen wife- Stephen Avery. It's Stephen Avery yeah, from- no. No. His wife- Making him work. Wanted to stay anonymous. So here's a screenshot of the news coverage- that is just perfect. The guy and just a fuzzed out <laughs> wife. It's just a guy in a red. As though people would be he's, like, I know all, him, but I don't know who his who wife is. He is. With? No, he's dating a ghost. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's fantastic. What's great is he's now presumed the whole town can't figure out who he's married that's to. That's what right? I'm saying. Right. Yeah, it's like, dude, great. if you're both going in on it, oh, go and by in the on way, it. By the way, it's not like his wife was in the porn. It's not like his wife right. has anything to be embarrassed about. Right. She was like, why is this point? Why does she not want to be identified? Well, are they afraid that like people are going to be like, these are the people who basically rained on our porn I'm parade? I'm going to theorize this. I think she is in the porn. I think that's the missing part of this story right yeah, here. Yeah, but it's some of her early work. But I wonder if there's porn, and I, and I don't know if this exists, uh, not not knowing the full porn landscape, but if there is like porn where like women's faces are pixelated out. Sure. 
Like no, that there's has porn, to no, be the a thing. Porn now, the porn now everything. is right. You can take porn where they pick, they take famous people's faces and put it on other people. Oh, oh, so yeah. you can yeah. see like you can see like <clears throat> can look like what looks like porn, but it's a famous Julia actress. Roberts. You can have the porn sure. from Aaron Bronkovich. Yeah, yes. in fact, Pornhub. I saw the story last week. Just started taking down all of those, and obviously there was a huge outcry because people love. Of that. Of course, yeah. people love. Which it. made me also think we grew up at the wrong time because yeah. that's all I would do. That's all you do <laughs> is like, put is put someone's Dame face. Judy. But by by the way, wait, this goes back to Michigan. So on our first, when we were at Michigan, Mm -hmm. this is, okay, this is fantastic. So we go in our our house senior year, and in the basement, we find this giant bag of porn. And- That's how it used to go. It was a giant bag, right? In the alleys. In the woods. The woods is a good place. And so we open the bag up, and (laughs) and the house was owned and run by a business student named Orhan. Okay, and uh-huh. Orhan had this house, and we opened up the thing. It was clearly Orhan's stash yeah, of the porn. Yeah, it's a but we opened up the stash, and what he had done is he had taken his face and put it on the porn. Stop. So I'm not Stop joking. It. At call so, Judd Winnick right now. He will verify. Uh, Judd Winnick and from they, Real World Three. And they <laughs> and we and the best part was is now we knew his secret was putting his own face on the porn, and that got him off in some way, shape, or form. Uh, it's seeing it's, himself, of course, yeah, so seeing himself, and and he was going to be like it. poorly cut around the head. Yeah, so it was like yeah. this bad scissor he job. He was doing that before it was now. And then he would come every month for the rent, and we couldn't say we found it. No, because no. you can't know. <laughs> and so I. Just be like, man, you're fucking us with this rent, brother. Right, but- I mean, you're 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 doing it in a way where you're really sweaty. Oh yeah, and your face okay. is not sweating at all. <laughs> I we're turned around on all. So fours. Michigan has a history of this, is all I'm saying. Okay, fine. Here's what I love. This story was obviously written by a third party because they're reporting on WXYZ saying that the woman didn't want to be identified. Uh-huh. And then we had the screenshot, uh-huh. which everyone will see on the Facebook page. Yep. Love everybody over Go to there. The Facebook page. Then here's the next sentence. The mother was later identified as Brandy Boseman by the News Herald. <laughs> uh, well, way to go. Good job, Pixley. Like so so then they show she and then they, in the same article, then they show, show her. her she, by the way. She, by the way, looks like No, don't, Dan. don't, don't, don't Dan, go down this road. She has a neck tattoo, it, it looks like. Dan. No, that's an earring. Right. Dan, I... Th- I, she looks liberal. I don't watch, she looks liberal. I don't watch right? any fair? porn, Dan. She looks like the star of every porn. I think she looks like Gwen Stefani. She does look like Gwen Stefani. She she, she looks like somebody who wouldn't give a shit about a tit. She's just a girl. A TV. She's just a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that she want to be I'm blurred. Just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying she looks like, if you're like, oh, is this person give a shit about a tit on a screen? No. But no. So probably the, not. The picture that she have an eye, does she have an eyebrow piercing? Yes. Well, it's actually like, in the ocular, in the eye. like the corner, in the corner, where and, the wings and then, go. A, and then either a piercing or a mole. Yeah, on, she has above a piercing on her lip too. Like to me, she, she looks like Gwen like, Stefani. She seems like the type of person that would me. walk into a Burger King when softcore porn was playing and and say, "Can we please turn this up?" Right? Hell yeah. yeah, yes. Why is it so soft? In a Facebook post, she allegedly so so. Remember the girl who didn't want to be identified? Yeah, she then starts writing about I it on Facebook. In a Facebook post, yes. Oh, I didn't want to identify myself. I just wanted to put it on Facebook. Uh, in a Facebook <laughs> post, she allegedly wrote that her son would, quote, have to live with this for the rest of his life mm-hmm. and that the incident would make him go through therapy longer. What? Pe- relax. Right? Yeah. I think I it's mean, actually good for the child. It yeah. is good. Look, he's going to see it. It won't register. It will register he's gonna when he's going to see it. He, how old was the kid again? He has the internet. He's already seen it. Right, he's know. seen it a million yeah. times. That's right, he looked at the soft corn. He was mad. You, you said there's not enough you call going it on. Soft right. corn, <laughs> soft corn. He wanted the soft corn <laughs> porn because they're soft Amish. Corn. It's soft Amish. Corn soft is, corn porn. Soft corn porn soft is. Corn is. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Avery and Brandy are concerned with how viewing the images will affect the boys. I feel like this will t- torment my oldest son. Avery said, "Someone has to pay." Guys, yeah. so now just yeah. Yeah. There yeah. 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 Just thinking about the lawsuits, protecting the my, child. Put my hand out. How am I, I, I going to get Burger King? De- the deep pockets of Burger King. Richard pay. Avery also added that, quote, when our kid sees a man or woman, they see them with a shirt on. No shit. <laughs> Unless they're no, at the beach. The pool. Yeah, this, at the pool or the beach. Richard Avery is the type of guy who's like, no, 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 I'll represent myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, you're like, no, I think you should get uh, some bro. legal. I am my own I spokesperson. I have an opening argument. When my kid sees a man or a woman, they have clothes on. Said so now. Your honor. Now they know what's underneath that shirt. It's not up to Burger King when we have a sex talk with our kids. But I ask, what if it was up to Burger King? To me, King? I would say, That's a better who, world if I not, live in. Who, I really, who Rabbi better? Hillel said, if not Burger King, then who? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we'll get out of here on this. The Burger King has a basic cable package and no clue how the images came up on the screen. They're, They're investigating the incident. And I'll say this before we go to break. Yes, they have a basic cable package, but what was on screen was a package that no one ordered to That's see. right. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's go to break. Brad Meltzer's with us. Uh, we are off and running. When we come back, story. dumb Burger King in our dumb town. Uh, I dumb love people it. in town. When we come back, we'll talk about all about his new book that's out. The Escaping of the Escaping Artists. No, it's just The Escape Artists. All right, I'll be back with Brad Meltzer on more Dumb People Town right after this. It's a trying time that challenges all of our basic assumptions. However, one thing that brings us all together is our common humanity. Now, more than ever, teams must come together and work together to solve big challenges. And Trello is here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format. Plus, tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Teams of all shapes and sizes in companies like Google, Fender, and even Costco all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. With Trello, you can work with your team wherever you are, whether it's at home or in an office. No matter what device you're using, computer, tablet, or phone, Trello syncs across all of them, so you can stay up to date on all the things your team cares about. Keep your workflow going from wherever you are with Trello. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello.com. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the show. Brad, you are... uh, I love... I I love, first of all, that you are our friend, and I also happen to love reading your books. Um, And this one, we were talking. We had lunch before, and we talked about how this book took you longer to write than more recent books because you wanted to get the characters or you look back at all yeah, your books. Yeah, explain to, the, to our listeners what you explained to us just prior to this whole yeah, uh, no, recording. Yeah, no, listen, um, and again, 20 years I've been doing this, 20 years writing thrillers and, you know, at this point, I can figure it out as I go, right? And and we can, all of us, right? All yeah. as, as entertainers is we know what to do and you can just continue doing the same thing you do. And I just, I don't want to call it my, my midlife crisis, but it was my midlife crisis. I was like, you know what? I want to be better than that. I don't want to just like do it again and just phone it in. And so I looked back at what are the books that were the best ones. And what were the ones you said, okay, these are the ones that performed the best for you. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't what performed the best, favorites. right? It the wasn't what performed the best. It was actually the, the ones that connected with people. Okay, so got what the were best. the ones that got the and best? And it was the 10th right? Justice the First Council, where I did The White House, um, The Millionaires, and The Book of Fate were right. the ones that I really looked at. Because those are the ones that people still email me and Facebook and tweet me about. Isn't that crazy? Uh, those like, characters. They'll tell you which ones Oh, and, and they won't resonate. ask about the plot. They're, they're asking about the people in it. Tell me what happened to Nora. Tell me what happened to Ober. What happened to Michael and the first daughter? Like, they know their lives. And I realized, of course, that's what makes it They're resonate. connecting with these people. It's the people. And, and so I was on... I was on a USO tour in the Middle East, and they took they take six thriller authors every year. The best part was is right before we got there, it was the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders were entertaining, <laughs> the MMA fighters, yeah, and then us. That's great. And my buddy was that's, like, "Can you the tape the audible sigh yeah. when you walk in the room?" And they realized that like they've got oh, instead of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, here's the literary group. Yeah, right? exactly. Here's so, yeah. instead of the da- like Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. So we're going to show you Burger King softcore porn. Right. Then we're going to show someone getting their nose jacked through the. T- Top of their head, we use MMA, MMA style. Now let's just talk about books. Let's talk. Who wants to talk about books? And then, but the the truth is, is that you know, so many people come up to us and they're like, "I love the country singers, but you're the one that's actually the first person that's here for me because I'm a reader." And and obviously, it's a smaller group, but man, I love them. I love that the members of of the military are doing that. That's where I found that about. I bet they read so much, and there's so much. Oh, I get all these letters from people on submarines and in you know all Mm -hmm. these battles. It's crazy what they what they do. And it was there that Dover came on my radar. And Dover is a place we've all, we actually all know it, even if we don't know the name, it's where the flag cover coffins come off. Mm. And, but Dover is also where the biggest cases go. Mm. So it's where you have the space shuttle goes down, 9-11, the Pentagon victims, they all go to Dover. And all right. our spies across the globe <clears throat> go to Dover too. Yeah. And I was like, I got to go there. But when I got there, Dover was a place where it, I mean, again, not to bring the party down, but because it, it's just so, it is inspiring to me, but they will spend 14 hours rewiring someone's jaw so a family can see their loved one one last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, Rebuild crazy. someone's hand because they, the mother says, I want to hold my son's hand one last time. And it's amazing. I was like, I need to write a hero like this. Mm-hmm. I want someone like this. We're a country right now starving for heroes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And here they were. And I was like, okay, I can start the book. I know what I'm doing, right? I got a plot. I got someone dies on a plane Mm -hmm. and their body comes to Dover. They open up the body. There's a note inside. The note says, Nola, you were right. 
keep running. And now you're like, oh crap. I'm you know, in. Right? I'm, and so, so that's I'm it. already in. And so, you know, and then he realized Nola's not dead. She's alive. She's on the run. She's the escape artist. That's chapter one. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I can build the boat while floating the boat. Right. But I was like, don't start the book. Like, just don't start. Yeah. This is what we're yeah. talking about at lunch. Is like, and then I went into and found that since World War One, that the US military has had a painter, an actual painter on staff who paints disasters as they happen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're telling, you know, and they said that it was, they were there in Vietnam. They were there at beaches in Normandy. 9-11, that's who got through security, was our painter. And I said, you're telling me we have someone who everyone else is racing with guns blazing, and we've got someone racing with paintbrushes in their pockets. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's the craziest person in the world. I want to meet him. And they were like, you mean her. Mm-hmm. You want to meet her. There you go. And I was like, there's my character. And I waited for that, <laughs> and it took me an extra year to do it. Instead of two years, it was three years. And that was, you know, then I could start the book. And I, it took me longer, but I'm happy that, that's what it took to make it a better book. Right? And you're it's, seeing it resonate with people right now as this book has yeah, come out. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. yeah, to watch. I mean, we've never gotten better reviews. We've, I mean, not since, you know, I had hair, right? I mean, it's yeah. just like it's That's been a long, long time, time ago. Long time ago. You guys know ago. that joke, right? And so <laughs> that was a little too yeah, right exactly. together right there. Um, <clears throat> but the truth was is for me, I look back and, and you know, what I want to talk to you guys about, we've, we talk about this all the time amongst ourselves, is how do you get better? Right, like, what do you do twenty years in? And for me, how do you grow? Right, like this grow? is my secret, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you know, my first book when I when I sent it out, it got twenty four submissions. We got twenty two rejection letters. The last two were supposed to be the ones that said yes, and they had actually liked the book. I went and went to New York, and I met with the editors, and I was like, "This is going to be great." My and editor, you're in law school at the I'm time. I'm in law school at the time. I'm not like, wanting to be a lawyer, trying to get out of law school. And and my editors, my agent says to me. These two editors, number 23 and 24, they really like the book. They're going to bid on it. We're going to have a bidding situation. You're going to make money. You're going to get out of the college debt from Michigan that you need to pay off. Yep. I was like, great. I wait by my phone. And she tells me, wait by your phone. I'm going to tell you what the news is. Wait by your phone. Like, it was. By the way, it was that was pre cell phone. Pre cell phone. Right? Wait, you go, wait. By your, I wait, wait by there. your phone. I'm calling at whatever damn it. time. And I'm sitting there waiting. I'm waiting for her to tell me how much money we're going to make and how I'm going to get out of debt. And I mm-hmm. pick up the phone. And she says to me, sorry, kiddo. They both said no. And they both said no. And it was over, it was done. And to this day, every day that I sit down for 20 years, yeah. every day I sit down for work, before I start working, I repaint that entire scene. I picture the phone I was holding was one of those see-through ones. You could see the wires inside because <laughs> uh-huh. it seemed like high tech yeah, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I picture the the bed that's on my right. It's just a bed in a box spring. Yep. I picture the you know Formica desk and that swivel lamp that every college kid yep. has. I picture the the... I'm looking over a terrace. There's a parking lot below me. And right on my left-hand side, there's a, a fire station with three doors, one, two, three. And every day I look, I paint that scene and I say to myself, sorry, kiddo. Yep. And I want to, I never want to forget what it's like to be 24 years old <clears throat> and think that I'm going to write the best book in the world. I never want to take for granted that I've had 20 years to be mm-hmm. able to do this. Mm-hmm. And I certainly never want to believe I ever made it. Because the moment you know where you think you made it, you're done. Finished. You're mm-hmm. finished. You're finished. And I said, that's, to me, I'm the escape artist, right? Like, yeah. it's not about escaping and running away, but how do you get better? How do you improve? And my dad lost his job at 39, lost everything, and he called it the do-over of life. Mm-hmm. And I was terrified, but he acted like it was a great adventure. He was the escape artist, right? Yeah. Like, trying to just reinvent yourself. It's the greatest magic trick of all. So here you are and you've got this book now that you sort of dug into your past and said, how can I recreate or how can I create something that, res- that how can I recreate the great moments that I've had in my career? But do it point? in a new way. Do it in a new way. And now you've got, I mean, like for anybody, that's what I'm going to say to anybody, spring break's coming up. If you have families, you have kids, you're taking a little bit of time off, get this book. You Nobody writes books that turn pages, in my opinion, better than you. Like the, And this is what I say, at the when you're tired, if you read books before you go to bed and you're like, okay, this, this, chapter, is my last chapter. this is my last chapter, I'm going to bed. The mark of a great author is you read that last sentence of that last chapter and it takes you over to the next page. And you're like, I can't I go keep to, going. I can't go to sleep. I got to read the next it's thing. Like and where's, it's like, where's Waldo? Exactly. It is like, where's Waldo? And, and, and you know what? Thank you for taking 20 it's a years of my life and turning it into where's Waldo. It's a literary where's those Waldo. Those hold up too. Just like they that. Do. No, they <laughs> do. I buy them. I have, a, I have more of those and I have my own. I love it. I hope everybody checks your book out, man. Me too. sounds so good. I cannot wait to get it. I'm going to read it on on my spring break, which is coming up in two weeks. Yep, so I'm taking it with me. With the kids. So I'm so excited. The Escape Artist. Let's jump into another story Let's and we'll it. talk more about other stuff when we uh Here we go. Break. This was sent in by Jules at People Are Nuts. 
She's been around for a she's long right. time. Thanks, Jewel. She's she's right. It's at people underscore a r e underscore nuts. She's nuts. Cherville, <laughs> Cherville, Indiana. Oh, an electric napkin dispenser was stolen from a White Castle in Northwest Indiana, and then it was returned with a note. So this is crime. What if this and is the beginning of a Meltzer book? This is, it's I, this is chapter no- three of the <laughs> escape artist. <laughs> Dover gets the thing, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And here's First the of note. What is Keep an running. electronic napkin Ma- dispenser? You never can't seen, pull them. It's exactly what it, I think it's. <laughs> you put your hand on it, and, and then, then it just comes, comes out? out. Like in the bathroom, or is this in the restaurant? I don't. In know. I've restaurant. never seen one in the restaurant. Only like Disney World could have the technology, but I've never seen there. Yeah, and do you guys like White Castle? White Castle is a very St. Louis thing. Like it was around. In fact, so much so that the White Palace, which was based on White Castle, which is Susan Sarandon and George Clooney, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure. White Palace was a movie that was shot in St. Louis across the street from our dad's company that he owned, which they built a little tiny white palace, Mm -hmm. like a white castle little place where they fall in love. So white, so with the white castle, the story of it is our mom had never, she grew up in Ohio and had never been to white castle and they were in St. Louis and she went out with my dad and a bunch of St. Louis people people went to go to white castle after they were like, went to see a movie or something, went to white castle and she had never ordered one before. And my mom said, I'll just, I'll split one with someone. And, and everyone <laughs> laughed in her face. Someone was like, split one? I'm going to get six. Yeah, for people who don't know, a White Castle is like a two-bite burger. Yeah. It's, it's a like slider. a slider. And they're it's disgusting. Yeah. My Uncle Richie in Brooklyn has been banned from all White Castles. Really? Oh, yeah. Why? You know Why? my crazy, you remember my crazy you, Uncle Richie? I know Richie? of your crazy, crazy Uncle Richie. Richie. <laughs> is like, I mean, he was actually arrested in Hawaii once in the governor's pond. And when they arrested him, he said, my name is Mr. Squid. And his friend was named Mr. Octopus. <laughs> Like mm. so, Uncle I mean, Richie. I'm thinking we need to get him well in Dumb People Town. We gotta get him in Dumb People Town. <laughs> he is. Uh, he he would be a rare catch for you guys. <laughs> he, so he's banned from every banned from White Castle, and he could eat a lot of White Castle. But Jesus. banned. I don't. I don't know why the ban is on. We just knew. You knew growing up, Uncle Richie. Banned. I'd love to go to there, and I'm with Uncle Richie, and I'd love to go to White Castle, but that's Can't. a no fly yeah, zone. Nope. Yep. All right. Well, fine. it was 4:30 in the morning at the Sherrillville White Castle when a group walked in and ordered food, mm-hmm. which I'm assuming took 30 minutes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What that do you want? What? Hey, what, what do you want? What, what do they, they have? have? <laughs> Burgers. Uh, what? Do they have chicken? I think they, they do. Have, they have, think they they have, have chicken, chicken rings. Isn't chicken that White Castle? Ring? Yeah, oh, White Castle God. has chicken rings. Do they have porn? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Burger King. Can that's I turn this TV? <laughs> Uh, after finishing a meal at about 4.50 a.m., so they ate fast, I guess. Oh, 20 minutes. Yeah. Done. Uh, on the, at the restaurant at the uh, 800 West US 30... Mm-hmm. One of the men unplugged the dispenser from the counter and left. So he walks up, unplugs, unplugs, unplugs the electronic napkin dispenser, and then leaves. So he doesn't take he it. He doesn't with take him. it with him. No, he takes it with oh, him. Takes oh, okay. it with yeah, him. Unplugs it, puts it in his arms, and walks, walks out. out. Which also, drunk friends, one of them, him, was like, "I'm going to take that. Like, just eat your food, dude." I don't think you I'm can take, take anything that you unplug. Yeah, that's my it, rule. Like it seems like rule. it's part of if the whole thing. If it's plugged in, it doesn't belong to you. Well, and that's something you here, can teach I, your kids. I'll, I'm, I'll get controversial. Uh huh. So Chipotle, oh boy, they have the Tabasco sauce mm-hmm. at Chipotle, and they have the Chipotle Tabasco. So I said to somebody once, I go, "Can I get take like a little container?" <clears throat> yeah. And they're like, "Just take the whole thing." <laughs> and I go, "I don't think I could take the whole bottle." And the person goes, "What do you think? We keep the bottles?" It's there to get used. If you sat here and used the whole bottle, nobody would stop you. That's a and great we, point. And we don't keep the bottle. So That's if, someone at Chipotle said yeah, that to so you. If you want, That's not even somebody who worked there. If that was you just want a bottle of Tabasco, <laughs> you're taking the amount you need. What do we care? And then did you say to the guy, can you please move to your left? I want to watch the rest of this soft <laughs> porn. I now. haven't paid for Tabasco sauce in two years. <laughs> I just stopped by Chipotle. Walked Daddy, stop it. You can't do that. I don't do that. Damn. I don't do that. Damn. I don't do that. But if, when no, I live you there, think it. That's the thing that's you reveal. Thing. You it's think like, it every time. There is a moment where Dan is driving by a Chipotle, and there's one right on uh, There's right one on right, on, Beverly. right by Larchmont. Beverly, Beverly and yeah. Larchmont. Or there's one on Hollywood and Vine. Okay, so there's a moment where Dan, like half of his body is Turning the it's wheel, like, I can do this. this. The Tabasco, the Chipotle Tabasco, that is Chipotle flavored Tabasco, is the best. If you I, can put the that thing on that I'm anything. more excited about is I think there was a point in time where you were going back into Chipotle and kind of wishing that person was there. 
Oh, we're looking no, for your magic person. Like, no, I have working? taken them. That's a company wide stance, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Right. Yeah, one the, person says it. Yes. It was spoken by one. And so if you ever gospel. get caught taking well, out a bottle, you you're, you're going to turn around and like, but he, he said, you're he like, said so. sir. No, th- I will use the same logic. I go, did you put this out here for the <laughs> use of a customer? Dan, right. Yes or no? Yes. So do you put a limit on how much I can Dan use? Dan is now no. representing himself in the <laughs> I court was going to say, you, I have a good defined for you. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Do you guys think I'm crazy? In the in the wrong? case of Daniel Van Kirk versus Chipotle, <laughs> do you think I'm wrong? No, I think you're right. I don't. I they don't put, think you're wrong. No, I you can't right. take the whole thing. You can't. You can use Why? what you want there, but that's like saying, "Well, so I like to I, eat, so I can have all the food for free." So if I got the, like enough little containers from them to pour the whole bottle, and I could leave with all those containers. But do you? No, you can't leave with like extra <laughs> like that. Why? Yes, you can. You could. I, though. No, you can. you can. If you you can have enough for what you're gonna eat right there, but no, not for to tomorrow's go. dinner too. It's to go. But do you consume <laughs> all of it? <laughs> You could. I Who's know you could, you but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Answer the question. Like, that's why I'm on that wall. By the way, this is, this is like, you, you guys think about... who, went, who almost finished law school. <laughs> you, guys, you guys got accepted. I know. We so, didn't go. But do you guys think about, oh, I can't take this many napkins? No. Why? You always but no, over... you to overtake napkins. You overtake I've never napkins. taken the right amount of napkins in my life. Right, but, no, but you don't no but if you on purpose has. go, if you on purpose go, you know what? I need napkins in my house too, and so I'm going to take all these then you've crossed the you've line. You've never taken more chopsticks than you needed just to have a couple at the house. Dan, let's... Okay, so let <laughs> no, me ask you this. No, that's what you have delivery for. Dan, they give you extras. Dan, let's say you go in to Chipotle. You've eaten some Chipotle. There, so far, we've done seven different pronunciations <laughs> of this restaurant. <laughs> it, keep going. I say Chipotle. 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 Let's say you go to Chipotle and you go and you have to go to the bathroom. You mm-hmm. go in the bathroom and you're sitting there on sure. the toilet. Right. So you've you actually that, eaten Chipotle earlier that right. day You've already. eaten it okay. five minutes before and okay. it's run through okay. you like okay. Chipotle. Sure. You're sitting in there, and you look over, and you're like, you know what? We need some toilet, toilet paper. paper. Right. right. I like where you're I going. I need some toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. You just take the whole <laughs> roll. Like, Why not? Up. Dan is just doing this to be con- You also do remember, I had yeah. this conversation Dan. with an employee. Oh, right? well, I think he speaks for the corporation. That's right. what I think, he clearly too. does. He seems look, like. If you're going to put it out there, I right. don't fear that Chipotle toll is going to go down. Based on Dan. Well, I hope this lesson. drunk guy at White Castle was like, they want me to take that. Yeah, it's mine. Why so would you he, put it out there? And you know what? In his brain, because I'm sure, you know how, like, when you're that drunk, you have the whole conversation in your brain, and then what happens is, like, none of the conversation. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he had the conversation. How are they going to miss it? In his brain, he said, I'm going to take this napkin dispenser, and the person he's talking to said, go, go ahead and take, take it. it. So he probably walked up, unplugged, <laughs> and was like, thank, thank you, very thank you sir, very much. Thank out. you for your Friends, he told his friends, like, you guys told me to take it. They're like, dude, you never said a word you to anybody. Right. You didn't you speak for the last hour. Imaginary people. Uh, After finishing the meal, he gets up, grabs the... Um, Unplugs the dispenser yep. from the counter and leaves. The man is described as a white in his thirties, about five foot eleven, two hundred and sixty pounds. Ooh, he had brownish five blonde hair. Five eleven, two sixty. <laughs> he had brownish hair and a full <laughs> beard. Is wearing a black North Face North Face coat and jeans. Now, one of my best friends, Bradford, is six two, but he looks exactly like yeah, this guy. He's he's three inches taller than this. By the way, this could describe like. Any of a number of people at a Dave Matthews concert. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. for sure. With the North Face too. Or yeah. a White Castle. Thank you. Uh, he says, though, then it says, here's the next sentence. So they describe the guy who was wearing a black North Face coat mm-hmm. and jeans. That was almost two weeks ago. <laughs> Samantha no Alice. No one has seen him since. And Samantha- meanwhile, White Cas- at White Castle... They're probably like, it's gone. Yes. We're, we don't you need are it exactly anymore. Right. Get your own napkins you are, on your own. Yep. We've made peace Make with as it much as you want. Take, Take everything. Welcome. Come what? into the back. Here's the toilet paper. You want a tub of ketchup? <laughs> Take it. Take it's it here all. for the customer. <laughs> Welcome to White Castle. Use your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Use your shirt. Samantha discretion. Alice, assistant general manager at the White Castle, says the napkin dispenser was left by the back door Thursday night, two like weeks a, afterwards. It's like, like Mr. the baby Moses as we're getting a I was going to go there, but I was going to say, like Mr. Rogers' car, Mr. someone stole Mr. Mr. Rogers' car. No way. And Fred the, Rogers. Fred Rogers had his car May he stolen. Rest in peace. And then it went on the news that someone stole it. And then the note came back on the car. The car came back and it said, if we knew it was yours, we never would have taken it. Whoa. And that is what happened here. Yes. Someone I was think, like, oh, I mean, what, what right. was really nice, what they did for him is that they took the brake shoes off. Yes. And just <laughs> set it right on the side. <laughs> At Sklar Brothers. <laughs> well, someone rang a buzzer. When employees went to the back door, they found a Christmas bag that can, cont- this is in February. Okay? So that was a person so who was like, we're going to use the bag again someday. Right. The bag is like, don't throw yeah. that bag away. Right. I know it says to Which Jeff is, on it. Oh but- my God. Every Christmas morning, 
with my family. It's like to, to some, save the bags. Because I'm Someone's in charge got in my family. I'm in charge of handing out the yeah. bags. Yeah. And then I also tr- like recruit the kids. If you want another gift, you have to help clean up all the stuff. By right? the way, great. Dan, right. that's very smart. Right. So it always ends up with like, does somebody want this box? <laughs> Is this box reusable? Can we throw? How about this bow? Can yeah. we throw this bow? What about this bag? What is are it a we throwaway? Keep- Dan, it literally is like, what are we keeping? It's literally in my family. It's like seventeen bottles of wine and, and wine bottle bags, uh-huh. and then all those bags just get put back into somebody's purse. That's right. And used again next year. I have no. Why would with that. anyone need a new bag? I have I no problem. But the with thing that. is, when you save those bags, it's because you saved the good bag, and mm-hmm. I like that they were like, you know what. This is worthy of a good bag. We yeah, gotta use a good it. bag. On this. <laughs> yeah, this we can't just leave this on the. Yeah. They can't just leave it on the back step either. Right. They gotta they put, it, bag. put it like in they a good put bag. baby Moses in, in a tiny, tiny little basket, basket on the re- mm-hmm. on the river. When Nile. employees went to the back door, they found the Christmas bag that contained the napkin dispenser and a note that said, "Quote: Sorry, I stole your napkin dispenser. Please don't press charges." Yeah. Felt bad. I mean that this has been two weeks. So this I don't is the guy who was ruminated charge. on it. He he. Yeah, the White Castle was like, yeah. So what him. happened what? in those two weeks? Like this is like the yeah, crazy. All of his friends are like, motherfucker, you got to take that napkin. To Either that back. or like he just something happened to him. Well, he was spending too much time. I'm with revealing that a lot today. So we at one year at Mancation, which mm-hmm. for anybody who doesn't know, this might be the first time I've talked about this in Dumb People Town. Maybe. Okay, I do a thing every single year with all the guys I grew up with, where we go to my cabin and just act like idiots for three days. So one year. Two guys stole a beer tap from the bar we were at the oh, night before. God. Okay. And all of us spent the next day making them feel like shit. Great. For it. Oh, complete you did, shit. Like, you did. Are you proud right. of yourselves? They, they allowed us into their bar yeah. and you guys stole their tapper. Great. You, and, and I did love you guilted the shit out of them. Until guys. one of them walked back down to that bar Thank you. and gave it back. And w- it, it was going to get returned no matter what. Right. But what did the, I what are the people at the Fox spent, Hole say? <laughs> it was not there. I mean, it's tail. Uh, <laughs> Fox tail. It's Fox, no tail. Fox. This is the story. This is the story from when we were in college. Remember at, at West Virginia? Oh, Dave. Dave no, Dave. remember they stole, right? They stole the computer. Do you remember this bit? Oh, yeah. Oh, you remember this? Right? I so, just remembered it. And just, they gave it back? Because I gave it back. I went really? back. Really? Who stole it? You went back? Did Mar- Mark It was Gimble. me. Mark Gimble. I went so back. Our friends are at home, Gimble, was that? There's Gimble. a third friend in So the our friend Mark studio. Gimble, who is a surgeon, oncological surgeon in Phoenix, is saying that he took the computer. He stole I the computer. I went back. I guarantee you, because I remember yelling at who took it. Did by you way, take it or did you bring it, was, it back? You took it? He took it. Oh, he took it. I went back with, I think it was with Joe. And by the way, it was I, a desktop <laughs> computer. That it was is a big, giant a computer. And I remember I saw it and they were saying, and I said, you can't take that. And I said, they said, but if we go back, We'll be caught, and I said, "Then we'll be caught, and we're going to tell anyone that we're sorry we made a mistake." And I returned that napkin holder. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, without Uh, without a bag. We also, by the way, I think stole a gumball machine from a restaurant, which Which was in a banter (laughs) thing that we had with uh, Kareem Fisher. Yes, no, but yeah, so. I hope this guy spent two weeks of his be like, you are a dirt bag. Yeah. You need to, we can't go back into take the White Castle back. until you take it back. Take it back. Right. How is anyone going to wipe the grease off their hands from these sliders that are going to get <laughs> from kill these them? these chicken rings. WBBM out of Chicago says, will there be charges? I love when a, I love when like a menu talks to you and says, you're going to love our pancake. Yeah. Like this is now an article. Are you going to the love reader. it? Yeah. Are you going to eat it? Samantha Alice, the assistant general manager, says, two first two names. Two first names. I yep. don't trust her. Says, <laughs> says, no, we are not pressing charges. White Castle's like, <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> White Castle is like your stepdad. Yeah. It's uh, like, wait, are you dead? No. All right. Get on back. <laughs> did, you see back. A, did you see a tit at a Burger King? Let's keep <laughs> no, going through life. On, I just want to know if he used it and plugged it in. Because I can understand you can like take a dispenser <laughs> But I want to know if he plugged it in and had a couple days where he was like, huh, the napkins are coming to me. Yeah, but there exactly. is, But let me just say this. Like, Burger King has some corporate culture to answer to. Maybe McDonald's is the most corporate. Burger King is in that same White ball. Castle. White Castle has no corporate culture. Right. No. Like, White Castle, I would expect to see a live sex show. Oh, like, from- in White Castle. <laughs> like a woman. That's on a- the menu, in fact. Just yeah, because order like that. a woman oh, just popping, like, ping pong balls out of her vajay, I, yeah. like, oh, into geez. people's mouths at Ready White for this? Castle. Ready for this? She says, this is Samantha Allen. Immediately after the man left, the employees wondered what the man was planning to do with the electric dispenser, quote, because he left the cord here. <laughs> so he so couldn't even question. plug he it. So do he it. unplugged it and left the, the cord. The, yes. Yeah. Uh, Dummy. Alice says the napkin dispenser was returned the day after security video was released showing the napkin nabber's image. Mm-hmm. Here he is, guys. I hope he's blurred. 
Uh, oh no, yeah. not at all. No, no. He does guy, not, I want him to be. It doesn't he look. He right. does not look. That guy looks like at all. Uh, that guy looks like a guy that even after he's gotten twelve hours of sleep lo- is tired. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. just tired all the time. Face is red. Like Face he's out of is breath. red. He's out, out of breath getting into his car. Yeah, the crime had not been especially well thought out. She said, "Really? <laughs> Most of the group paid with credit cards, including the man who stole the napkin <laughs> dispenser." <laughs> we got Which you. Shows you how drunk we'll that charge was. your card for the thing. We're going to get out of here on this. I'm going to ask you, friends, how, how much <laughs> is the napkin dispenser worth? Oh, Ooh, this, is this is a, a good great game. one. We've good never game. done Price this. Price is right rules. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Straight up. Oh, close straight? Yeah, close okay, close close okay. Now, you are a guest, so you can go first, TIG, or third. I'm going to say... Between. You're going to go first? Say, okay. Uh, it's a, I'm going to say $495. Wow. $495. That's $495. No way. This is like $120. One twenty for an electric napkin dispenser. Sixty nine ninety nine. Sixty nine ninety nine. This has to last. One twenty. Sixty nine ninety nine. One twenty. According to White Castle and Samantha <laughs> Alice, the assistant general manager, who yeah. did not press charges after it being gone for two weeks, the electric napkin dispenser is worth seven hundred dollars. <laughs> oh! yeah! Yes. Yes. I knew it because it has to be something that has to last. It can't be sixty nine dollars. You can buy a Costco. I thought it was a cost. That is so much more than I would have ever expected. White Castle, you do not need that type By the way, of response. You have too much technology. That's what she thinks it's worth. Right. <laughs> like, well, I don't I don't know, know, it Did it work when they yes. brought it back and forth? Uh, they just didn't uh, have the cord. Well, he didn't have the cord. Uh, thank uh, God it works, and thank God we just got through segment two of the show. <laughs> Give me a teaser of what we're going to be looking at in the third segment. I can... I want to read you the headline. You want to do the headline? Give us the headline and then we'll... Boy gets trapped in elevator after peeing on buttons. Okay. Hey. (laughs) You got that on the other side of the break. Plus, Brad Meltzer, this is Dumb People Town. Stay with us. Hey there, Adam Conover here. Humans Who Make Games is my podcast where I sit down with the people who created some of your favorite video games and have the kind of long-form personal conversation we so rarely get to hear. We talk about how they got into the industry, what their favorite games were growing up, and what it's like working in the trenches of this century's greatest new art form. This season, we've got a whole batch of new interviews for you. I talked to Kim Swift from Portal, Alex Preston from Hyperlight Drifter, Anna McGill from Control, and Alex Beecham from the game Outer Wilds. Whether you love video games or you just love learning more about other artists' creative process, I can guarantee you're going to love this podcast. So, you can get season two of Humans Who Make Games wherever you get your podcasts. Take a listen. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Final segment. Uh, you can follow Brad Meltzer on Twitter. He's a great follow. At, hey Dan, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. At Brad Meltzer. Yep. M e l t z e r. Like seltzer. With like an seltzer M. with an M. Uh, and if you have kids, he has an amazing and younger kids. He's got an amazing series of books uh, about. Like famous people that my kids not love just famous so people, they're just it's great. Not like the Kardashians. No, no, no it's great. Yeah, I, you can never heroes. do an I am. It's Kim a book Kardashian. of heroes for your children. Yep. I am Rosa Parks. I am Martin Luther King. I am I Abraham am, Lincoln. We've read them all with our children. They love them. They're actually it's like a simplified version of their life of like story. a biography. Yeah, it's, it's a biography. A biography exactly. Biographies for children. Yep, and uh, basically my, just to give them good heroes to grow up with. Because listen, look around right now. We're starving for good heroes. Well, we have the president, and he's oh, everybody's God. hero. Come on. So, uh, yeah, but but I do love that. And, and again, what I love as well, not only do you write amazing novels and thrilling novels and The Escape Artist being your latest one, please everybody go pick that up on Amazon or wherever you get books. Uh, but you also do those kids' books. And then you're also super involved in like the comic book world. I know that's like a deep, deep yeah, passion I'm doing of super, yours. Yeah, I'm doing Action Comics 1000 uh, next month. Wow. I'm doing a Superman story. That's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, and we're bringing the red trunks back, like the underwear on the outside. Mm-hmm. Love it. And I was like demanding of that. And I, you know, so, like, someone everyone like, was. Like a crazy homeless person. He's like, he just put I his just underwear. Let, you know, that's the thing is I love that, you know, you can work for 20 years trying to hone your craft mm-hmm. and you're like, can Superman wear his underwear on the outside of his pants? Because that's my demand. <laughs> that's, like, a, that's, <laughs> that's all I'm I need. I'm not doing it. I worked 20 years just to be able to make that claim. And I'm such a nerd about it that I wrote to the the artist and I'm like, listen, if they say no to our request, never show him from the waist down because he's totally wearing his underwear on yeah, the outside of his pants. In my brain, he's wearing it. Yeah, there you go. Always. I love it. So that's coming out when? That comes out in May. 
I oh, love it. Just dang. I love how tapped into that because you go to Comic Con every year, almost every year. Yeah, no? we go. We uh, yeah. You've I, been a bunch. You've been, I've a, been bunch. a lot. Yes. You've been a bunch, and you're a fixture there, which I think is awesome. Uh, one thing I want to mention, Dan, should we mention the drip? I mean, it's a new thing. Do you want to uh, even it's gonna start? Be, it's going to be coming out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so <clears throat> we're going to set this up. We're just going to give a little teaser right now. A little the, drip of it. A little drip. We're giving a little drip yeah. of the drip thing, which is yeah. If you're familiar with Patreon, this is called Drip. It's backed by Kickstarter. It's a fully funded, great, super legit company. Um, it's a great way and, and a lot easier way for us to be able to interact with you guys and provide additional content. So be on the lookout for that. But I wanted to give you guys a heads up because people in the town on the Dumb People Town Facebook page have been letting me know, like, hey, is there any way we could get extra content or I would love to be some form of a Patreon? So we have that. It's through Dip. We are going to have so many great extras just extras and ways for you guys to be more of a part of this town and get more from the town and have interaction possibilities with us and do fun stuff with us and in support person some town and community support. members and it's going to allow us to even do more live shows to be more interactive with you guys to do more content for dumb people town and it's available for anybody who wants that and just wants to be more involved with this podcast and get more of what we do so and then that's are, who it's for and so we're currently putting that setting together up a drip. setting up a drip thing right now and we'll just give we'll, we'll drip more information out to you yeah. so that you guys can sign up for it and decide if you want to give to it and, and then nothing, get that yeah, extra it's, content. It's all going to be anything you opt in for that you want to do. All of this podcast is going to stay great and stay the same. We're just adding more cherries on top for of the people Sunday. who want more we're yep. going to give them that yep. alright Dan let's get to this last story okay. because our boy, boy gets trapped in the elevator after, after peeing on, on the buttons. buttons sent in by NES Jumpman love this dude NES Jumpman is he in Madison he's in Madison he's in thing. Wisconsin a boy in China thought it was a good idea to hose down the buttons in his elevator by peeing all over them now, what thought, is that thought, thought process I've thought about doing that every you know have? you haven't no, I haven't. No. there is no way Although a guy in Brad, you have two. Do you have two sons, Brad? Yeah, they watch um, Elf, and they always want to push all the buttons oh, right. on all. Light it up. That I say okay. That I'm is okay fine. with that. But right. peeing on but them. But when you whip it out, no. that's where my line is. So this is the point where you say to China, maybe you pick the wrong sex of child to eliminate to start throwing away. <laughs> maybe hey, throw, China, maybe throw, toss throw, some of those boys throw out the this window. This guy over by the dumpster and focus where on having some. Where does this kid like get this idea? And what is he mad about? That's acting out. That to me is look. It's China. Like I, it, it, I'm assuming this is in a big city. This can't be like in, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously not rural China. They don't have elevators. elevators. It's, it's not an elevator China. in the Great Wall. But is this in is Hong it? Kong? Is this in <laughs> I uh, Beijing? Know. I will say this is of all the ones Taipei. we've done. This is the one where I'm so rooting against the kid. Oh yeah. Yes. Like I don't just want him to be caught on tape. You want him to I want cane. the elevator to plummet. <laughs> right. Like I want it to be like there's a there's a somehow a problem. trap door. <laughs> the person that if it gets liquid on it, right. it just plummets. I down to their doom. The, the person who wrote this article wrote, I have to say he has an impressive spray able to douse the entire panel. But who, soon, wait, wait, wait. Who weirdly said sexual. Who the said person that? Wrote it, writing it. You uh, don't see everything's uh, okay. from behind. I thought this was, by the way, I thought that was a reporter. <laughs> it and I was is. like, that's not really appropriate reporting. It is. That's what they wrote. I mean, that is literally I what they wrote. Is that the person who wrote it, the yes. story to you? Yes. No. No, that's fine. That's I'm talking about, like, is that in the newspaper? Yeah. It's in the newspaper. Oh or this article, this online article, whatever it is. I take it all back. We don't do a lot of vetting here yet. Listen, Listen to me. It could Listen be the same. I, this reporter is reporting about local crime right. and finally gets a chance to report on something where they can comment on a kid's urinary spread. Right. Is this the kind of thing that turns on Trump? Is he turned on by Yeah, this? exactly. This is an but elevator he'd ride up and down in. Soon after he zipped up and readied himself to disembark the lift, he's got to push the button. The doors, jig- he already did. The doors oh. jiggled around and didn't open for him. The button started blinking in a glitchy fit, going haywire as the lights went down. Dark. The boy was trapped, and according to Metro, had to be rescued by a maintenance crew. He tried to, to deny any wrongdoing. Even his parents came to his defense and said it would be impossible to pee that high. Which to me is just a parent that's, grasping yeah. it any way I can say yeah. my kid didn't do this. I is. love that's the, the thing is it's one thing to say I have a good child. Right. I love that they went with the physics of it. Right. They were just <laughs> like why, no, no one can pee that high. <laughs> right. It's physically impossible. Dude, what was our theory about New York City? If Unless, you can touch it, it's, it's been, been peed, peed on. on. That's a New York. <laughs> City. <laughs> then we were like, if you can see it, it's been peed on. We're talking about buildings. Up high on a building. Birds. Sure. Yes. sure. Yes. You can see it. It's probably Dude, you can definitely pee, pee that high. Despite what the parents had to say in defense of their child, that is where the video comes in handy. We will cue it up now. This is going to be, the link to the story will be on Dumb People Town. You, everything is from the back. So you, obviously we're not doing anything gross here. But you can see this kid. Watch this video, I guys. I hate this kid. I and hate I love him a so good much. podcast video. Yeah. There's but everybody good. who's in our town is going to be able to check it out anyway. Hit play, brother. So, well, he's like, that's just oh, like a big Chong, city. Chong Queen City. It's Chong King City. 
Oh, he, yeah, you know. And then they give it, he walks up. <laughs> Take me down to Chongqing City where the pay is paying What and the is he is doing? Per- he is, by the way. To his parents. Oh, that was pretty Yes, high. he can. <laughs> yes, he can. <laughs> yes, he can. To quote Obama, yes, we can. Yes, he can. This, I mean, every dumb adult the, came from a dumb kid, right? Here's the other thing. Yeah. That, can I just oh, say this about no, him, too? Now he's not getting out of the elevator. I'm surprised his I'll parents- i leave him in there for a week. I, I'm surprised his parents didn't go with the- he, Well, he has glasses. Why would a kid with glasses do that? That's all the parents' defense? Yeah, he has glasses. Have you ever seen a kid with glasses act like a, Like someone yeah. on Maury defending why it's not their kid? Yeah. Like I couldn't. I got wrinkles. Look at her. I have wrinkles around yeah. my face. That baby has no wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. By the way, no, I actually baby. will say- that surprising myself, I was like, that is pretty high peen. That is, high I was <laughs> impressed. I was, I watched it be like hating him, just venomously hating him, and so then going, I, you know, nice. Uh, that was pretty high peen. Aerosmith His parents are gonna have to it. pay for the damages. Oh. This is just one of those things in this town where I'm like, I think you have to rename the building High P Tower. <laughs> It is in God China. Damn it, Randy. <laughs> Who designed the building? I am P. I am P. This is High P Tower. P. High P Tower. In, in, <laughs> but I just, I just feel like in our dumb people town of like this little community we created, of course a kid peed on the elevator. Of course. Buttons. Of course they did. How did they it take did. this long? I'm not, I'm mad at every other that, kid. Yeah, why, I'm not why, thinking why, of it. Another kid. By the way, I keep hearing in my in my head Aerosmith doing a version mm-hmm. of Love It. Nope. Pee, pee in an elevator, <laughs> living it up, and I'm peeing down. <laughs> Except he's peeing up. Yeah, he's peeing, peeing up. Peeing, peeing it up, up and I'm, I'm going, going down. down. Really I, I will, I'm, and I'm also disappointed. I feel like America should have been there first. I feel like that should have been our moon landing. <laughs> I mean, like we should have done. This like, is another way China is beating us to the punch. I yeah. mean, would you be shocked if within a year we have a dump in an elevator? Dennis Rodman? Dem- it depends on Den- uh, yeah, Dennis Rodman might be in North Korea soon. So, yes. That okay, could, that could enough. easily, easily happen. Oh, I can't wait for that. Well, that'll be posted on the Facebook page so people can watch Just that. Just watch, and all. watch the spray of his stream. <laughs> yeah. What a dumb kid. That is the dumbest kid I think we've seen in a yeah, long time. I love it. And by the way, and kids. For having glasses, but, dummy. Also, Brad. he's a kid. He could still steer it right. Kids are dumb. Kids are dumb. They, yeah, they, no they make dumb decisions. They don't think about the consequences of anything that they're doing. This is probably the best example of that. But he is going to regret more than anything is not being caught in the elevator. It's that his parents had to see him pee. Yeah. That's going to be what really scars <laughs> right. him. And, and they by didn't the way, believe in his range. And yeah. they, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> yeah, they doubted him. They, they doubted, doubted his him work. as, yeah. As, That'd as, be like as, Del Curry saying, you can't make that shot. And then Steph Curry's like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah? 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 Watch me. I watch just crossed me. the half court. Watch me. I'm going to hit all these buttons. All of them. I'm hitting everybody. I'm hitting everybody. He had Steph Curry like range with his. He pee. did. He, he had did. Steph Curry. He definitely that. had the arc too. He walked in like the that. elevator and it just he's like, "This is my range. I'm open here." I hope there was a conversation with a parent before, like, because it looked like he was going to the first floor. That they were like, "You sure you're fine to ride the elevator by yourself?" Yeah. I, like he was like, it's my time my, now or never. And the great moment is is when he panics. You see what he does? He yeah. pushes the button again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he has to get a little pee on him. I'm happy about that too. <laughs> I think joy I from that. I, get, joy. I, I yeah. agree. All right. Before we get out of here, uh, every once in a while we get a voicemail from our good buddy Nicholas Cage. I don't know if he even knows he's leaving these for us, but why uh, not? Hey, why not? Why this, not? This is him. Uh, we have Brad Meltzer here, who's uh, an enormous, as we mentioned, comic book mm-hmm. uh, writer and fan. This is, mm-hmm. I guess, he's got some information about a superhero thing that he's doing, and he wants to share oh, it with perfect. us. Great. This is Check perfect. it out. Nick perfect. Cage. Hello. What a truly blessed day it is to be living here and on this beautiful blue planet we call the Earth. You know, so many people have laughed at me over the ages for various things, but the number one thing that people get in my face about is like, hey, remember when you were almost Superman and you and Tim Burton were going to make a Superman movie and all that leaked footage of me and my suit that glowed. There was like a, a suit we were developing that had blinking lights in it. You can look it up online and find pictures of that and people always thought that that was just the craziest thing ever. Nick Cage should never be playing Superman. Ha <laughs> ha, well guess what? The joke's on you, you piece of shit of earth. Nicholas Cage will be doing the voice that he has always been put on this earth to do. I'll be voicing the voice of Superman and the Teen Titans Go movie all right so you know what this is you can eat crow every person in in this entire world who thought the idea of nick cage playing the son of Jarrell, you know alter ego clark kent who thought that that was the craziest idea ever but i always knew deep down in my darkest of hearts because i think it's pretty obvious i had a pretty fucked up soul 
but deep in my darkest of hearts that this was the the reason for my existence is to play you know the alien being that is superman because i nicholas cage am a superman you know it's kind of a shame that i'm not here on earth that i don't have superhuman powers it's a shame i should be able to burn things with my eyes can you imagine how that vince neal fight would have gone down if vince wouldn't have dragged that woman by her hair. I could have just used my heat vision and just fucking ripped his hands off and saved so many people so much, uh, uh, you know, adversity. Uh, it's a great day for me. Uh, I'm very happy about it. I'm celebrating with my son, kal uh, all afternoon. We've been playing catch in which I'm throwing... I'm throwing some of my skulls and then he has to go get them for me. It's more like fetch, whatever. Um, you guys go ahead and uh, take good care of yourselves and relish in this amazing, amazing thing that is going to be me being Superman and uh, everybody else, again, who doubted me, go fuck yourself. Cage out. Wow. Uh, okay. By the way, I want to mention this because this is actually really cool. There is Nick Cage. If you like Nick Cage on this, mm -hmm. there's going to be some Nick Cage and Terry. It's called Nick Cage and Terry. It's live audio commentary over a Nick Cage movie. Uh oh, that is ha that is happening next weekend. Oh, this that weekend, that's a this delight. Oh, snap. So you where's, can hang out with him. Where's that happening? Actually, watch a movie with him. Which watch a Nick Cage movie with Nick Cage? I'm gonna guess UCB Sunset. Commentary. Oh yeah, that's UCB, UCB Sunset. Nick Cage and Terry Sunday, March 25th at 8:30 p.m. Uh, and that's UCB Sunset. It's a, believe, a free show. Who wouldn't want to go check Get it out? Get on that! Nick Cage and Terry, Sunday, March 25th, 2018. All right, before we get out of here, Brad, you just got a phone call, and I want you to relate. This is, by the way, this is, we've never done like the live, uh, like real time, the, the real time uh, news because now you get to hear it before my family does, which means when they listen to this, they're gonna be mad that you knew. No, first. Yeah, this, will, this, this yeah, comes yeah. out in, in a week, so okay, so yeah. they'll know. So Good. They'll know so I didn't tell them first, but yes, we just, I literally just picked up the phone as we were taking a picture uh -huh. um, that. The skateboarders will be number one on the New York Times bestseller list. That yes! is crazy. That's awesome. Which is dude, crazy. So which means dude. my family did buy a lot of copies. No, yeah. no a lot of people did. did. Let's keep it there. Let's keep it there. Dumb people town. Let's keep it on number top. Number one on the New York Times bestseller. That's a number one New York Times bestselling awesome. author. That's the first one we've ever had. Uh, congratulations, buddy. Love you guys. All right, we got to get back to work. It's a good show.